Nashville's market is starting to ramp pretty hard. The winter doldrums are fading away and spring is ramping. I'm going to give you the data and then you guys make your own conclusions and please post your thoughts in my comments below. But let me make a PSA I had on Twitter. Some guy told me that I needed, I had a moral obligation to tell you that Nashville is cooked. So there you go. Nashville is cooked. Part of me thinks I was debating a 16 year old. So let's get into the data because you need to know some things about Nashville market if you're a buyer or a seller. And the first thing I want to show you is last year, single family residents, this is mostly site built houses with lots. Single family was 26,969,000 houses sold in the greater Nashville area. When I tell you that 27,000 transactions happen, what I'm talking about is Cheatham, Robertson, Sumner, Wilson, Rutherford, Williamson, Murray, and Davidson County. So it's this chunk right here. That's what I'm talking about. 27,000. Now to put that in perspective, let's go back to 20. Let's go back to 2019. Let's just see what the 2019 levels were. 35,000. That's a much more normal number. It got to 37, almost 40,000 during the pandemic panic buying. The other thing I want to say about this, and I honestly forgot, but as I've been reflecting, I think it's important to mention this. 2018 and 2019, it's always been a seller's market. You have to go back to 2012, 2013 to feel like you really had a buyer's market in Nashville. And that's not to say that there aren't buyer's markets out there. I'm going to show you some wild data in a minute, but just in general, I I have this buyer and I always tell him, I'm like, look, if your wife is sending you the house, then everybody wants it. Okay. Everybody wants it. It's going to be hard to buy. And of course, every time he sends me a house, by the time I look at it, it's under contract. It's not because I'm like late at looking at it. It's because his wife is sending it and she has good taste. The the point of that is, is that it is a seller's market in a lot of ways in Nashville right now. Now, we can see that inventory is massively grown in greater Nashville. Okay, going back to the nine counties, that's what we're talking about here. Inventory is up 20%. Now, you see this big drop right here. That's of February 1st. A lot of listings expire at the end of the month. That's what that is. We're still up 20 percent. You have over a thousand more options than you had last year at this time, but contract volumes down 3%. This means that there's fewer buyers and a lot more sellers. And that's the trend we are seeing with 7% mortgage rates. But I got to tell you, look at the ramp, very steep ramp. It has me thinking if this ramp is like 2023 that we could go positive by mid-February on the contract volume. Now, the primary reason behind that is really the mortgage rates. As long as mortgage rates are year-over-year negative, you go back and look at the mortgage rates, you can do this, and it, and it I'm telling you, it works. We're at 705 right now for mortgage rates. Okay, 705. You go back a year, look at this launch up. It launched up very rapidly in February, and by mid-February of last year, it was about 7.15, which is above where we are now. We'll probably see demand exceed. It's very sensitive to mortgage rates. That being said, the old Trumpster, he just dumped a big bond grenade in the middle of the Friday non-news cycle. You can see that bond yields, they were negative or flat all day long until he announced these tr- these trades. And then look, boom, up three. That being said, so, I, you know, looks like mortgage rates could be going up, could be going up Monday. I'm going to have my, pop, I'm not even going to eat breakfast. I'm going to have my popcorn and I'm just going to watch the 10 year yield all day long because that's going to tell me where mortgage rates go. And I'm telling you, it's going to be wild. Monday's going to be wild. So if we get an 8% mortgage rate, this thing will just taper off and we'll peak well below that number. Maybe we go to 25,000, maybe it drops another 10%, 25,000 closings for the year. Nonetheless, there's still 25,000 of you that are going to buy a single family home in the greater Nashville area. You're going to want data to do that. I want to help people that are planning on buying. They say, look, my wife is making me buy a house. I have to buy one. At least let me pick my representation. Reach out to me. We're data driven. We're, We're cynical. We think this market is ridiculous, but we're not magicians. Okay. You're still going to overpay for the house you buy. It's just going to be less severe like this guy. Let me show you this guy. 
This is my uh, neighborhood tracker. Okay, so here's here's one that sold on Hillwood Boulevard. You can see all the transactions going back, but look at that supply and demand. Look at that. Supply's growing every year. This market's getting squishy. This is a neighborhood that's getting squishy, but that's not what I'm trying to show you. Okay, look right here. This guy, 714 Hillwood, do you see what happened there? Look, outlier. Okay, paid 2.3 in July of 2023. Guess what? Boom, 1.8. 1.8 in July of 24. One year later, $500,000 loss on this house. If you have data, you could see, hey, look, this is an outlier for the area we're in. Got to be careful. And that will clearly help you when making decisions. In fact, we were helping someone in the nations just recently, and, and he's going to end up getting a Three, a two and a half percent, two point seven five, two and a half, something crazy mortgage, crazy low mortgage, and he's paying a fair price for the house because we just said, look, we're not going to overpay for the house, but we'll pay a fair price. We negotiated the price, we we negotiated, we got the the assumable mortgage. That guy's, it's my favorite transaction I've ever done. This is my uh, neighborhood tracker, which by the way, my buyers get for free. Not that you want to look at charts, but if you do, plug. Nonetheless, look right here. Look right here. All the red is your seller's markets. All the green is your buyer's markets. This is based on the ratio of active listings to contract volume. Okay, so you look in Bell Mead, you've got 58 that closed last year. You've got 23 active listings. It's really only about a 4.8 month supply of inventory. But if you take the ratio of active listings to the only the three that have gone under contract, it feels like an almost eight month supply of inventory. It's kind of like the weather channel where they say it feels like the temperature versus what the temperature actually is. That's a situation here. Whenever you have a situation where it feels like an eight month supply, but the inventory is only a four or a five month supply, you have a stronger advantage as a buyer than you would a traditional market. In a lot of neighborhoods, it works. A lot of neighborhoods, it works. In fact, what I wanted to show you I wanted to show you this in Sylvan Park because I thought it was wild. Sylvan Park has went from being a very good buyer's market to tight in an instant. Look at this, okay? Look, just two weeks ago, we had 26 listings. This was more active listings than we've had in Sylvan Park back for years, for years going back towards the beginning of 2022. More active listings. Look what's happening with contract volume. It's spiking Active listings are tanking. And so we're seeing that demand pick up rapidly. And that tells you that there was or there might still be an opportunity, but it's fading quickly. Let me give you another example. Here is the active listings to contract volume for all of Nashville. This is a wide open pool. Just take all active listings, a ratio of all con uh, contracts over the past 31 days. And what do you have? You see how it's tanking? It's still much higher than it was last year, but you see how it's tanking? This drop means that the spring season's beginning. Now I know you're thinking like, well, doesn't everybody buy in the spring? That's the point. Everybody buys in the spring, and so this ratio drops rapidly, and so the market tightens up. There's a lot more demand for the active listings out there. That's what you're seeing. Contracts are ramping rapidly right now. You can see that with this chart right here down only 2.6%, which by the way, I mean, we started out abysmally low. Being down only 2.6% from last year is a wild change and could end up going positive next week. We'll see if it does. I don't know if it will or not. I don't know if it will. Who knows what's going to happen with the whole tariffs and the bonds, the mortgage rates. You got to pay attention to that. But, but the truth is, it's like nobody knows what's going to happen, which by the way, brings me to this tweet right here. We don't know what will happen with tariffs, with immigration, with fiscal policy, with regulatory policy. It's like nobody knows what's going to happen with these things, and they all directly impact the housing market. So I'm not going to pretend to tell you I know where prices are going to go, even though I can tell you where prices are going to go in the next 30 days, which is this right here, okay? But outside of that, I can't tell you where prices are going to go. Let's look at this price chart, okay? We can see uh, we started out, and this is start from January of 23, 470 and we dropped down to 450. By the way, that was the low in the market after the 2022 bust. We dropped to 450 
And then it bumped back up and then it dropped back the next February to 460. Notice that the lows are getting higher. Notice that the highs are getting higher over the last two years. And here we are now into February and we're seeing $500,000 as the median price. That is astronomically higher. Now, there are two forecasting metrics that I use to figure out where prices are going to be next. Here we can see that contract directly impacts price. You can see that. What's under contract? And you can see how it tracks with price. Typically, price is going to be lower than contract. This is pushed out 30 days. So what we can see is that price is probably going to end somewhere between 490 and 500 for, for January. And then in February, it's probably going to be about the same place. Now, price cuts, I can push those out over 60 days. We can see a little bit further into the future. And here we can see that price cuts have been ramping. This suggests that we'll probably get a boost in price, but it's probably going to be short-lived because as you can see, the price cuts as a percentage of active listings have started increasing. And this suggests that whatever price boost we get this spring is going to be much, much softer than previous springs. Now we can say this because look, active listings up 20%. Okay, contract volume down. Okay, it's not up, it's down, but it's basically flat. And we can see that all these price trends suggest that there's not going to be a massive bump in price although nothing would surprise me in this market. Don't pretend like you know, nobody knows. Jay Powell, even though he couldn't see inflation if it smacked him in the face, he doesn't know and he stares at numbers all day. So let's just be careful about this. If you are trying to buy, even though I have contract volume, look at Rutherford County. Rutherford County is really bad right now. Minus 16%. Williams County's flat to last year. Davidson down 3%. Dixon 33%. 33% up, but I mean, it's Dixon's tiny. Murray, Murray's a kind of a risky one. Rutherford's kind of risky. I kind of wonder if they're being impacted by the layoffs. I kind of wonder if that's why the contract volume is dropping there. You know, Murray has a lot of exposure to automotive. And let's be honest, for every layoff announcement, there's all kinds of layoffs that you don't hear about. And hiring too, by the way. Every time a business moves here, you could probably multiply it by five. Five businesses that didn't decide they wanted to make a big hoopla about it. They just quietly moved their business. They're quietly trying to find a warehouse. So I do wonder if that is playing a role we see active listings in Murray County or Rutherford up 30%. This is really bad. Rutherford, that's Murfreesboro area, looks really bad. We go back to that layoff and that's hovering on the southeast side of Davidson County and, and into Rutherford. You kind of wonder, is it happening there? And that's, by the way, by the way, that's why we use this neighborhood tracker. Every red is a seller's market and every green is a buyer's market. Okay, if you are looking to buy and you buy in a red area, I mean, here you can see 19 active listings, nine under contract, a complete change from where it was just a week ago. It's absolutely wild. That rapid of a change, this would have been a great time to buy just a week ago. And now it's tightened up so much. Sylvan Park, one of my favorite neighborhoods we bought in this neighborhood. I love it. Right there, we house hacked, scraped every penny we had to get that. It was a, it's a cool story. I love it. You see East Nashville. It's a mix. It's a mix. Depending on where you are, it's a buyer's market or a seller's market. With that, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have a great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. I'll see you then. Thanks a lot.